Welcome to the Daily Tanya. Today is Thursday, the seventh day of Elul. Already a whole week into the month of Elul, a special month of Rachamim, compassion. And um, let's begin the Tanya. We continue today and finish chapter 11, the very unique, special chapter. The letter 11 in the Geras HaKadosh. Let's begin with Sadaka. G'dayla Sadaka. Shemakarev Zesakeula. Also, don't forget to say the extra chapters of Psalms that we day, say every day in the month of Elul. Today's chapters is 19, 20, 21. You can have, there's a link in the description to say the daily Psalms and the daily uh, studies. So, this this letter, as we explained yesterday, is a very demanding letter. al Rebbe is putting us, uh, guiding us to place us on a different level, on a whole different level, in the faith in Hashem. And we spoke yesterday in length about no matter what a person goes through, sufferings and when you realize that everything is Hashem everything is from God and God is good then it is good except we don't see it we just have to internalize it that whatever happens is good and why is that so yesterday we spoke about the fact when we understand what it means, Hashem creating us every single moment. Hashem renews the creation every single moment. And if Hashem is good, and now you're being created, right now, so no matter what happens, Hashem did put you in this place. Except it's painful, it may be painful, but when you have meaning to the pain, you're able to appreciate that this is something, there's something good. There is a story of uh, the Rebbe's grandfather, Rabbi Shlemi Yanovsky. He was the rabbi in the city of Nikolaev. And it was a time in the late uh, 1800s, there was um, a plague. I think it was typhus or something. And whoever got infected was placed into quarantine outside of the city, a special camp. And the Rebbe's grandfather got infected. There was a chassid there, there was a sheikhet, called him Rabbi Asher, Rabbi Asher Grossman. And when he heard that the Rebbe's father got, the Rebbe's grandfather got infected and he was placed he walked out and he went to this place, the camp, as close as they allowed him to go. And he stood there with the Tanya and he called and he read this chapter, this chapter, letter 11 from the Alter Rebbe, the Haskil Chabino. He not, didn't just read it, he screamed out from the top of his lungs. He did it for 30 days. Every single day he came and he went as close as he could go to where the Rebbe's grandfather was and he screamed this chapter. And miraculously, the Rebbe's father, the grandfather came out and he was cured, he overcame this disease. This is actually the end of this chapter. Now, the Rebbe says that when we internalize that everything is from Hashem, and whatever comes from Hashem is good, except that we don't see it. It is beyond, it is, it is a, power, a good that is beyond our grasp. When, we don't, when you have it, when you change your perspective and you realize that, eventually the good is going to come out. And that's what the end of this chapter says. But the truth is, this story really, in a way, misses the point. Why? Because the point that the Alter Rebbe is telling us here is not that you should look at everything that comes and see that eventually good is going to come out. The Alter Rebbe wants from us 
that we should change our, our perspective, what our desires should be. Is our desire, our focus of life is our self, or, I'm meaning our material self, or is our focus of life being with Hashem? That Hashem is here. No matter the situation, God is here and God is with us. When you focus on your life is that Hashem is here. In any situation, then it's good. There's the song of Rabbi Levi Yitzchak of And it goes, uh, Where do I find you? Where do I not, not find you? Mizrach du, Mayrev du, Tzafen du, Dorem du. You are in the east, you are in the west, you are in the north, you are in the south. And then it says, as is good, is do. If it's good, it's you. Cholilanit, weiter do. If God forbid it's not good, it's still you, it's all Hashem. And then he says, and as is do, is doch good. And if because it's you, then it's good. It's a very deep understanding of what it means that we, if we live with Hashem, if we live with a purpose, so things can be painful, yes, but if you realize their purpose and you realize that there is something that Hashem is here and every moment you are with Hashem, then Hashem is good. You have Hashem's presence in you. And it's a very demanding letter that the Alter Rebbe says. And he says, if a person does not do, live that, direct, that way, then he's not better than the Erev Rav. What is the Erev Rav? The Erev Rav are the multiple, multitude of people that joined the Jewish people when they came out of Egypt. And they wanted to join the, the Jewish people. And they accepted the Torah. They did everything. Yeah, good. But their purpose was, they saw the Jews are having it good. God is with them. So let me join them. As soon as something didn't go their way, that's it. They rebelled. They were the cause, cause of, the, of the troubles in, 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 the, in the golden calf and all other things. Because if the focus is me, if the focus is what is good for me, then it's all depend on the situation. It depends on this. If, if as soon as something goes wrong, you miss the whole point. But if the focus is emunah, you live with emunah, you live with faith in Hashem. When you live with faith in Hashem, that everything is Hashem, that brings you to the true simcha through joy, even when it's painful. And yes, as a result, ultimately, God willing, it's going to turn into a reveal good. But the main focus, says the Alter Rebbe, is to realize that everything is good. Everything is Hashem. And that's how we need to live our life. Now, is it easy to live that way? Absolutely not. But the Alter Rebbe puts us on this road. And we follow this road. So at least we are on the right, play, on the right path. So let's see inside what the Alter Rebbe says. Therefore, first of all, man ought to be happy and joyous every, at every time and hour. And truly live by his faith in Hashem, in God. Who animates him and acts kindly towards him at every moment. And al Rebbe goes on and says, if a person is, is sad, is depressed, he laments, then he's like denying God, in a sense. Why? Because you're showing, you're saying, oh, I'm not, it's not good. If you believe that Hashem recreated you this moment, and everything is Hashem, is it painful? Yeah, we should ask Hashem that should, the pain should go away. That's okay. But not to be sad. And not to lament the situation. 
But he who grieved, who is grieved and laments, he demonstrates that he's undergoing some hardship and suffering. And lacks some goodness. And he is heaven for friend like an like a heretic who denies God's omnipresence. Well, Cain says the Alter Rebbe, therefore, Yerchiku Midas or Atzvus Bimeoid Chachmeihemes. He says, it is, it, this is why the sages of truth, the sages of the Kabbalah, the Kabbalist, they strongly rejected the trait of sadness. For it contradicts a Jew's true faith that there is no place devoid, devoid of Hashem. If you're sad, that means that right now in this situation, how could you be sad if Hashem is right here with you? In the situation, in this, even in the in the worst situation. But the truly faithful, however, is not protruded by any suffering whatsoever. And with respect to all mundane matters, yes and no are all the same to him in true equality. Do you, whether I have what I want or I don't have the, what I want doesn't take away from the fact that God just recreated me and is right here with me. But he to whom they are not the same, the heaven, the have not, the yes and no, if a person does not, it's not the same for him. He demonstrates that he is one of the Erev Rav who act but for themselves. They see it's good, so they want to join the, the Judaism. Choice of convenience. He loves himself to the extent that he removes himself from under the hand, the authority of God, and lives the life of the Gentiles, because of his self-love. And therefore, because of his self-love, he wants the, the, wants the health, he wants children, he wants parnasa. This is why he desires the life of flesh, and children and sustenance. Why? For that is his good. If that is the what is this is what your focus is, this is what your what your life is, just the physical material things, then it's no difference than any other Gentile. From a Jew Hashem demands something greater. And Al Tareb expresses here a very strong language. It says, Indeed, it would have been better for him had he not been born, not been created. Why? Because what is the creation? What does Hashem do when He creates us? He takes an ashama in a places in the body. The body lives a material, a material life. What is the neshama there for? The neshama is here to introduce to the body that there is a deep, deeper life. There's a life that is connected with Hashem, a godly life. But if a person misses that point, it might as well not have been created. <speaking in Hebrew> For the main purpose of man's creation in this world is to test him by these trials and physical tribulations. And why is that? <speaking in Hebrew> To ascertain, to ascertain what is in his heart. Whether his heart will turn towards other gods, meaning other than God. Namely, the passion of the body which evolve from the Sitra Achra and desire these. Oy, that is the test whether the person's life, whether the desire is to material things, things that come from the other side, and that is your desire to have such a life, 
אוי אם חפצי ורצוני ללכי יש חיים אמיתי במשתל של המליקים חיים. או whether his desire and wish is to live the true life which evolves from the living God. ויאמין שבאמס הוא חי בהם. One must believe that he truly lives it, the true life. וכל צרחה וכל עניין אב משתל שלם באמס בפרוטי פרטסים שלא עם מסית רחה. And we must believe that all his needs and everything related to himself truly evolve in all the details, not from the sitra ach and not from the evil side. Ki me Hashem itzadeh geva koinonu. For by God are the steps of men made firm. Ve'ein milochulu. And while there is yet no word on my tongue, you God know it all. Ve'im kein akel toiv betachlis. Accordingly, everything is absolutely good, no matter what predicament we have. Except that it is not apprehended as such by men. We feel the pain. When one believes this, truly everything becomes good, even on a revealed level. שבאמונה זו שמאמין שהרע עניד מבגולי, כל חיוסי הוא מטוב העליין. Because for such a faith, by such a faith, in which one believes that what manifestly seems to be evil, in fact, receives its entire vitality from the supreme good. Everything is from the good. שהיא חכמסה יסבורך שאינו מושגס. Meaning from God's חכמה which is not apprehensible. And which is the Aden that transcends the world to come. That is where everything comes from. So when a person really truly believes and internalizes this, that everything comes from the ultimate good, which is the ultimate Hashem, the level of Chachmeh of Hashem, the highest level, which is beyond our comprehension. What happens then, says the Alter Rebbe, with this emuna, we are able to elevate that that imagined evil, they elevate it into become a revealed good. By this faith, the imagined evil is truly absorbed and, sub, uh, and sublimated in the concealed supreme good, so that the good becomes palpably revealed to the physical eye. What a beautiful letter. A letter that is not easy to, to uh, materialize, to actualize, but we need to practice this again and again and again. And ultimately, we'll see that something, something will stick. As Rabbi Steinzel gave, gave a, an example, it says a person is drowning and he doesn't know, he, he's looking for help somebody to save him, and all of a sudden, he gets hit on the head. And he thinks to himself, what a pity, what a situation, what a predicament. I'm drowning, and if that is not enough, I'm being hit on the head. But then he turns around, he realizes what he was hit with was a rope. A rope that can save him. He gets hit, it hurt him. It's all about perspective. It's all about understanding what is happening. So when we go through life, and we go through life, and life brings up with it all kinds of predicaments, it's our perspective that is important. The, the true perspective, the good perspective, it is Hashem, it is God. God wants for me something. He wants to elevate me. He wants me to climb out. He wants for me to hold on the rope. And to hold on to our faith, and that brings us true joy. That we live with Hashem, we live with joy. May we all be able to live with Hashem in a revealed way, in a good, in a revealed way. Have a wonderful day.